ever want to sell this car and i mean it when i say that unless i find a better spec out there which really the only better spec i can find is maybe a manual one hey guys welcome back it's kyle i know i haven't been on youtube for a while but i want to give you guys some life updates this is my 2019 corvette zr1 and this is not the same zr1 that you guys have seen the past year i've had it uh, this is a different zr1 if you peep the couple small things red mirrors not as low as it was no badges on it as far as like the zr1 badges and there's chrome exhaust tips you guys remember my car black exhaust tips black mirrors red and black badges and this is a different car so opening up here you guys might see something a little bit different in there all right guys if you remember about a year ago i posted a video of my zr1 it had a small wing on it i bought it out of like massachusetts it was an automatic it had like 10,000 miles on it and i was planning to keep the zr1 forever and if you guys remember in the video i specifically stated i plan to keep this car forever and i don't if you guys know i own a dealership sinister auto sales i have a lot of cars that go through there that are pretty sweet if you guys don't want to you want to shop my dealership sinister shop.co is a dealership if you guys know me um i have a lot of different cars at the dealership so as far as when i say i'm keeping something i'm planning to keep something just because the stuff that i keep in my personal household that are my personal cars they mean something to me that being said the only way I would have sold my C7 ZR1 is if I bought, if you remember, if you go back and watch the video, I said the only way I'll sell this car is if I bought a manual. Well, I was at Streetcar Takeover in Indianapolis with one of my friends. Um, he doesn't want to be mentioned because of privacy reasons, but he was interested in purchasing my car. And I was like, I'm not selling my car. And as we're scrolling through, you know, cars.com and whatnot to find other cars for him, he showed me a red on red um zr1 and the funny thing about the red on red zr1 is it was a manual it was a low wing non-ztk zr1 if you guys remember my personal if you guys know what ztk is it's, it's a track package for these cars with the big uh bigger wing on it and the front carbon canards on the sides that's the only thing that makes it ztk from my knowledge and we're sitting there just chatting and this car popped up funny thing about this car this is the most expensive c7 other than the c7 race car that has ever sold on bring a trailer which is a collector auction site for all high performance um, and classic cars it sold for two hundred and forty one thousand dollars plus bring a trailer fees so you call it two hundred fifty thousand dollars it sold on bring a trailer for and i i was like there's no way i'll ever pay two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a zr1 which i didn't um that being said, we're scrolling through, we saw this car for sale. It was tens of thousands less than 241,000 plus fees, whatever. Um, it was listed at a dealership that I've done business with. And I called them, I was like, hey, you know, is this car still available? They said, yeah, it's still available. So me and my friend locally worked out a deal where he was happy and I was like, you know what? I'm comfortable enough to pay the larger premium to buy this car. The thing for me is this car has a lot of special, special attributes that I didn't want just to give away with the old car so the pre the new owner was willing to and I, I should backtrack real quick this car didn't have ztk didn't have this big spoiler which is basically impossible to get it didn't have the front canards the carbon canards and i told myself i was like the only way i'll want to do this whole trade deal is if i can keep the special stuff i can keep my signature wheels i can keep my if you guys remember i swapped all this bronze trim interior onto my new car that had silver trim I was like, my wheels are bronze, interior trim is bronze. Only bronze only comes in the Sebring Orange package. I mean, I just, I'm very picky with my personal cars and I wanted them to be perfect. I was like, hey man, the only way I'll do this if I can swap all my stuff. My friend's super cool. He has his own style and taste. He's like, yeah, man, no problem. You can swap it. And he's a car guy. He's not afraid of taking things apart. I mean, we took the steering wheel apart. We, you know, to take the, change the bezel. We changed the, all the trim. We swapped the seats out because uh, I wanted the backing. And the nice thing about this car, excuse the tire light but it only has 4,000 miles on it while well, mine had about 10 and the nice thing about that i got a lower mileage car i have my manual transmission that i always wanted and yeah i mean it worked out for the for the both of us and the cool thing is he got a red on red zr1 which if you guys 
don't know. They only made 57 torch red with red interior zero ones ever. Not any other specifics. Not manual, not comp seats. They only made 57 red on red. I'm not sure I mean they made in a manual. I'm not sure I mean they made a manual with comp seats. I mean, I'm not that picky when it comes to those statistics that close. But I have my dream collection. If you guys remember, though, um, if you guys follow me on my social media, Sinister Lifestyle and uh, Facebook, my Kyle Antonio page, I, a lot of, I have a lot of friends on Facebook for car enthusiasts. But I bought a Viper back in March. And right here making this video, we're in August. And I bought it back in March. So I haven't showed you guys that car. I'll show you guys that car. But if you guys know my collection, I have a 13 Viper. I have a 12 ZR1 Corvette. And I have a 14 GT500. So I have 12, 13, 14. All the major makes, all supercharged, well not supercharged, not all manual transmission, the V10 and the Viper, of course. And the reason this car, 2019 ZR1, is such an oddball in my collection of the four performance cars is I had, this was one of my first sports cars I had when I was like 18. I went on a limb and bought a C7 Z06 in a manual, red on red. And it's always been close to my heart because, you know, that's when I was growing up, that's the car I, I had. You know, I sold it unfortunately because I couldn't afford it at the time. Now that I can afford it, I bought the bigger, badder, older brother version, which is a C7 ZR1. And the cool thing about this car, it's got full paint protection film. So now that you guys know about what I did here, I'll show you guys a little bit around the car. And we're at uh, my one of my buddies' PPF shops, and we're here because the car has full PPF on it. Um, there was some spots that needed to be trimmed, some excess PPF, but you know the full door is PPF, the quarter panel is PPF, the side skirt, the, that's PPF, the whole back bumper, spoiler, and luckily the spoiler was already PPF before, so the entire car is PPF, roof, trunk lid here, back of the car, um, but all this, this car was, I'll, I'll drop some pictures right now of the car, how I, when I bought it from Diamond Motor Works, it was chrome emblems, it had uh, chrome wheels on it, it had, you know, like I said, the emblems, it had you know, no tints on it, no bronze interior, no wheels on it, you know, the chrome wheels, and no ZTK package. So I changed that all. We spent one day together and we swapped everything, me and my buddy. And now I'm trying to make this car back to the form it was on my automatic car. So I put the LED side markers back on it. I put the ZTK spoiler on it. I put the front canards on it. Obviously the wheels. Um, I put black emblems on it. You know, it pretty much looks like the same car. The only thing with this car is it had the chrome emblem, so I had to switch the emblems out. I, it was a very tough time finding the red and black emblems, which you'll see in this video. I found the red and black emblems that go here on the hood and on the back bumper. Um, another big thing, this car, the my car, old car had an X-pipe and a GM performance intake that I added. This car luckily comes with a factory GM performance intake, so I don't have to buy that, but I had to buy a new X-pipe. Um, you know, obviously it deletes the secondary cats. Another big thing is I took the rear um, exhaust tips off, or like the axle back, and I got them powder coated black so it all matches because I'm picky. I had the rear diffuser fins I got to do on this car. So those are just little things I'm going to do to this car. And to the normal eye, no one's going to know that I changed anything with this car. It literally, literally looks like the exact same car. It's just I have my special manual transmission because my C7Z06 back in, what was it, 20. 18 ish uh, 2017 i think is when i bought it actually it was a seven speed manual i love the automatic in my old car it was actually really fast i ran a 1040 in it if you've seen my last video at the at the, at the other streetcar takeover i was at and that's pretty fast 1040 for a pretty much stock car you know toyo tires and, and that's it's decently fast um for a rural drive car i should say and uh this car, I don't really care to go fast. I'll have fun in the manual transmission. I have shop cars, you know, the shop car I have right now, and I have shop cars every year, I'll go fast in, but it's literally the perfect car. And 20 years from now, this is something that's gonna be special. The manual with under 5,000 miles. I'll drive it here and there, but honestly, I probably, it's only at like 4,300 miles. I don't think I'll probably drive it up to 5,000 in the next couple of years at least. And I have so many toys to play with, but let's get this thing back to the house. Let's get it on the lift. I gotta get this rear uh, diffuser completely off. So I'm able to take the exhaust out and uh, send it off to my powder coater. All right, at home now, got the C6 ZR1 here. You can see a box with the Lloyd mats right there, X-pipe, a little canard for the rear diffuser. We got this thing rolling. Cool thing is too, I got these little inlays I made um, when I had my other ZR1 in here, like you guys see in the pictures. And we, uh, I used that to make a template for the new emblems. 
which come over here. This is what I was looking for. And um, these chrome, chrome boys here is what came on it. These ugly chrome things and these chrome things. These are actually, these are the black ones that came on my uh, automatic car I just sold because I changed them to the red. It's nice, it has a little red inlay there too. Um, so the C6ZR1 here, GT500 here. This is fishing line from when I took off the emblems. I don't know why it's sitting in my wheel there. And um, my Viper is at Prefix. If you guys know anything about Prefix, they're doing some small things to it to finish to finalize my full build on it. Um, but I'm gonna pull the C7 Zero One in forward. This old baby here, I love this car. You guys see it always in the background. My 14 GT500 um, glass roof car. I don't drive it often, but it was a dream car of mine when I was like 13, I wanted one of these. I didn't even know what a Shelby GT500 was, but I wanted a red Mustang. And as you guys know, I try to find the coolest and the rarest bits of the things. This is a rare color, rare color combination along with the manual. This is actually, they only made, I think, like 50 of these two in red. And then I don't even know how many, well, red with the glass roof. I don't even know how many they made uh, in 14 exactly. But the Viper 2, it only has 8,000 miles, one owner car. We'll talk about that in another video. But let me move these cars out. This thing's about to be really loud. Decided to pull her in forward just because if I'm working back here and I need tools, it's easier access just to knock the tools from there. Sitting outside the lift a little bit just so I can pop these ramps off and then pop the diffuser off, which shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I'm going to quickly throw these blue tape things on there and the back bumper and put the emblems on before I uh, forget because they're already starting to drive me crazy. So what's cool about this is I made a template on my old one so I could see where to put the emblem back because when I pulled this off, um, I didn't put anything directly back on for you know a few days, which is now. But now I have the outline of every emblem when I shaped it before. I know exactly where it should be, height and everything. And you can see that's where I marked the bottom. It's literally flush the bottom, so it's perfect. I obviously did the same thing with the hood. I'll show you guys in a second, I put that line for the end of the hood that goes closest to the windshield. Well, let's throw this on. Literally perfect. There's nothing more you can ask for than that. I mean, literally, it's perfect. Take the, whatever the hell you call this thing off, and it's perfectly centered. Dirt and debris all over my arms, but that was really easy. Um, I think I've taken these diffusers off like three or four times now. It's really not that bad. Let me just lay it down uh, gently here on the ground. The little diffuser parts, fins, I should say, go right here. So there's like two, they go on each side, I believe. It's really easy. I mean, there's eight millimeters on the bottom. There's two tens on each, behind each reflector, which they pop out from the back. These clips pop out from the further side of the, of the inside. So the furthest side, there's clips, clips. Two tens behind the uh, on top of the exhaust, two behind the license plate there, and really as soon as you pop those out from the outside, you can reach your hand under. Um, it starts popping out, and then after that, you're able to remove the two tens, and then there's just two or three clips on top, and it just pops right out. It's really not bad at all. Um, this thing's really clean, other than some grass over here. This thing's pretty clean underneath. Um, seems like there was some dirt and grass on each side. I mean, but like. Look how clean the fender liner is, all in suspension, looks pretty mint. Um, looks really nice under here. I'm not sure what this 2020 date code is. It says OP 1020. I doubt this thing was built the 10th, the October 20th of 2020. Um, 815, I'm not sure what the A number is, LS. Is that upside down? Maybe when it was installed. But yeah, the whole point of this, I gotta remove the axle back because the only way to do the um tips 
is to take the whole axle back off and then it cuts off right there you can see at the x-pipe which i'm going to do a new x-pipe anyways because the old one had an x-pipe and this one has the factory uh middle piping or whatever you call it middle mid pipe with a uh, secondary cat in it so i have a new x-pipe that's going to go there i just got to get this off because it's going to take about a week or so to get it powder coated and done from the shop i'm taking it to so i want to get it done and over with now while this video is taking place i have somewhere to be in like 10 minutes uh one of my good friends wedding actually but uh i got the exhaust fully off pretty much the axle back and the actuators on the exhaust all the hangers um or exhaust hanger whatever the hell you want to call them um the only problem is i think the x-pipe holds it in because you can't even see the exhaust like flange is showing at all and uh i think i just have to get the x-pipe off so i'm starting to take off the plate and i might loosen up the x-pipe i might take it off i'm not sure what i'm gonna do exactly at this moment because i have like 10 minutes till the wedding but this x-pipe is like a 20 minute job if you've done it before and if you haven't it's like max an hour it's really not bad there's just a bunch of 13 mils and one two 18 mils for the plate and then they're just maybe i think there's like 12 mil for the flanges and you might need some ratchets and wrenches for these but it's pretty easy with like five minutes to spare five minutes to spare i got it off i gotta jump in the shower put a suit on and get to a wedding but what's nice is off ready to go I'm gonna send it out to my powder coater the nice thing about this is since it's a seven speed and not an eight speed auto it's a seven speed manual there's no like gear um uh shift like shift leverage what do they call it shift um i can't remember the shift line there's a line here somewhere I, I forgot where exactly but somewhere here there's a line that will cause a problem with getting the driver's side i think uh axle back off so you have to literally like put it in neutral manually and then you can get it out which the nice thing is you can see right there so it's like tremic or something but um it's nice you don't need to do that and the x-pipe literally just fell off i literally let it rest on here while i got the axle back off and the rest of it will go back together uh fast enough i actually got oil too i gotta do an oil change on this thing i'm not sure when the last time i was done I, this car has passed a few collectors since i bought it um i'm obviously gonna drive it but the collectors i'm assuming just let it sit so i'm gonna do a full oil change to make sure it's all good um under tray x pipe x pipe actually deletes those uh, secondary cats so it makes it a little bit louder it gets about like 10 15 horsepower to the wheels the axle back along with the exhaust tips are off to the powder coater i unboxed the lloyd mat for the rear trunk here just to go back here um it's not sponsored by lloyd mats but they make really nice corvette mats corvette racing ones is the ones i picked out for this car um, and to show the legitimacy of the build and the car um i have here the window sticker non ztk it has the performance air intake which is 700 bucks the gym performance intake seven speed manual torch red adrenaline red um, if i open this up without showing too much information on the um the seller two hundred forty one thousand dollars and if i can uh show without the vin on there you'll see there corvette 2019 241 thousand I mean, if you want to look up the vin it's all over the internet so go ahead but um besides that it's cool obviously that's what just to prove the legitimacy of the um you know the same car lloyd mats are cool coming over here i'll show you guys the x-pipe i just unboxed and i already swapped over the exhaust hanger here and uh you can see that really the only difference is this i don't know what's up with all the bracing here um that one doesn't have it it's, it's, it's a you know just an x-pipe here but the secondary cats is getting deleted you can see you know this one looks a little bit taller because it has studs on the bottom which that one doesn't there's no difference there's also exhaust flanges you got to take off so these little this area right here they're rounded you just put a screwdriver in here and pop each side and these come off and then you just slide them onto the area here but yeah, I'm still going to wait for the axle back to come back, but I'm gonna just going to toss this on for now. I just want to show you guys the differences here. And this is obviously the skid plate that covers the exhaust. Hey guys, about a week later, I wasn't going to make a video until I was back. My brother-in-law actually picked up the uh, axle back and it's ready, ready to go. I'm on vacation out of town in California right now and something crazy happened. I got a beautiful view here in California, just trying to enjoy my vacation. I don't take many vacations. With the exception of car events, I don't take many. I just, you know, this is one of the vacations, uh, you know, me and my fiance wanted to take and, you know, get away, enjoy ourselves for a bit. So something crazy happened about four or five hours ago. If you guys don't bring a trailer, I was telling you guys, my ZR1 was the most expensive C7 ZR1 ever sold on Bring a Trailer. 
and the caption or the title of this video is going to be, I bought the most expensive C7 ZR1, you know, the stipulations on bringing a trailer. And if you guys look right here, this 2019 C7 ZR1 just sold for $251,000 plus bring a trailer fees. Um, I was commenting on it, watching it the whole way. I was bidding up to like closer to 200 grand, low, like, probably like 160, I think I, my highest bid was. Um, and I obviously wasn't interested in buying another one. It had 1,300 miles on it. It was red, same, same, the exact same spec as my car. Although my car didn't factory come with the ZTK package, it did have ZTK. This car had 1,300 miles. And on top of it, something interesting is somebody fat fingered the Carfax and it had a mileage um, inconsistency. Um, so that means, it, I wouldn't say it's a bad Carfax necessarily, if they, they can get it fixed potentially. But in my opinion, I don't buy stuff with mileage inconsistencies. I don't buy any lemons. I don't buy anything with accidents, you know, stuff like that. But it went for $251,000 with a mileage inconsistency, which is crazy. So that makes that one the most expensive C701 ever sold on Bring a Trailer. I'm still going to put the caption of the title of this video as, as mine is that because, you know, I've already made it so far in the video. I've mentioned it many times into the video and I don't make enough YouTube videos. So I'm trying to gain, gain traction on this video. If you guys don't like it, you guys can go cry in the comments, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, call it clickbait or not, but $251,000 for a seven speed manual. Um, and the reason, if you guys ask why I didn't buy that one, first of all, I already bought mine. And second of all, I wanted red and red. Like I told you guys already, that's kind of my theme. Um, the red with the black and, and red stitched interior on the one that sold is beautiful, although it's not my um, spec. And, for a thousand miles, I'd feel bad about driving it. Four thousand miles, I don't feel so bad about driving it, but a thousand, I would. Um, I just wanted to announce it here. So if anyone tries to fact check me, you guys know, you know, this video is updated. Um, but let's get back to the house. Let's get the axle back installed. Let's finish up this video. Oil is drained. Diffuser fins are on. Axle back with the black exhaust tips are done. Put my ZR1 plate back on. X pipe is done. The under tray is back on. New filter, a little bit of new oil in it on. It's nice they marked exactly where the bolt goes back in with a little white chalk, looks like, or white marker. Now I just gotta put some oil in it, and she's pretty much done. I don't wanna bore you guys, it's already been like a half hour of a video. Um, but yeah, looks so much better now. These diffuser fins are really weird how they kind of go on a slant um, on each side. But on top, looking above, it looks good looking down below. It just looks weird when you install them like that, though. Don't worry, guys. Fender, like I told you guys, pain protection film. That micro, that dirty microfiber is not going to do nothing. But she's getting that freshy, freshy, fresh, fresh. Ten and a half quarts are in. I've started her up for the first time. X5 too, sounds good. Sounds just like the other one. I gotta reset the the oil light. I can change oil soon. And the tires are from the tires being low when I raced the other one at Streetcar Takeover. I never even aired them up. We're done here guys the diffuser fins are done axle back powder coated is done exhaust x pipe is done um emblems done tinted windows done all the stuff i did off camera interior trim um ztk spoiler ztk front canards ztk um like front canards i was saying the signature wheels we're done guys i mean this car is perfect now uh only thing left is to lower it on the factory lowering bolts and getting alignment I did an oil change too. I mean, the car is perfect now. There's nothing else it needs. It's literally the same exact car. You wouldn't even tell the difference. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do this a lot. One of my friends, Hishi, if you guys know us, me and him have a little, you know, fun racing um, relationship. We kind of laugh and mess with each other online, but we're very good friends. He t calls me king of swaps because I do this a lot. I'll make one car 
perfect with multiple different cars. You know, I did it on my Trackhawk. I'm dropping a few pictures now of my Trackhawk. It came with um, F8 green, which is like bright green metallic. And I put red interior, which they don't come like that. I bought an 18 Trackhawk, put it the red interior into my 21 Trackhawk and just made one car perfect. Um, I'm doing that here with this car. As much as I love the Trackhawk, it wasn't a keeper car. This right here, I'm keeping it forever. Um, there's really no better spec C701 to me personally. Um, and this is the best car I could ever want as far as a C7 Corvette. And I have my perfect C601 and my perfect 14 Shelby and my perfect Viper, which is coming up in a new video. Um, you'll be seeing it up next after this video. If you guys have any recommendations on what you want to see next on the channel, uh, please leave it down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me a lot to make. It took me a lot of energy, time, and effort to put it together. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions down below, leave them down below. Follow my Instagram at Sinister Lifestyle. Follow my business page, Sinister Auto Sales. If you guys are looking to buy or sell any performance cars, check out my website. Besides that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.